This is the T-34, a Soviet tank from World War II. And that over there on the side of it is a log. And this is the American self-propelled howitzer M7, also from the Second World War. And there in front of it, logs. This is the T-90, the main Russian tank currently in operation. And look at the log over there. Why do they carry these logs? The large contact area of the tracks distributes the weight force that the vehicle applies on the ground, resulting in a much lower pressure compared to wheeled vehicles. And that's why tracked vehicles have a good ability to travel on swamp and mud soil. Even though the M1 Abrams is four times heavier than the M1126 Striker, the ground pressure is half as much, due to the large contact area of the tracks. The tracks are very efficient for swamp and mud terrain, but there are situations where even they can't handle it. That's where the logs come in. They're used to help the tank climb out of the mud. The log is secured to the front of the tracks with hooks or tow cables. As the tracks rotate, the log moves to the rear and is then disconnected. The process is repeated until the tank is free. The downside is that it can only move in a straight line. The log makes it easier for the vehicle to step on a firmer part of the ground, increasing traction. In cases with very muddy soil, there is also a small increase in propulsion by the reaction to the mass movement of the soil, throwing the mud backward and propelling itself forward. The log must not be wider than the vehicle, and must be about 10 feet long and 7.5 to 9 inches thick. This same principle can also be used in passenger cars. If you ever need it, now you know. One detail, the bottom cylinder is a log, but the top one is a snorkel, a tall tube that supplies air to the engine and crew, enabling the vehicle to be fully submerged when crossing rivers. As you can see, there are several logs on the sides of this M4 Sherman, but the main reason was different. During World War II, some US soldiers added them in the hope of reducing the impact of German anti-tank weapons. The idea was that it would detonate prematurely before touching the armor, dispersing the metal jet and preventing it from fully penetrating the vehicle. However, its effectiveness was never proven. Instead, it mainly boosted the crew's confidence. Like the use of sandbags, it increased fuel consumption and caused additional strain on the suspension. As can be seen from this Mark IV tank from the First World War, it is believed that the British Philip Johnson was the first to design this device to help stuck tanks to free themselves. But over the years, the West has relied less on this technique, giving preference to recovery vehicles such as the M88, which are more effective and capable of rescuing damaged vehicles. So if you look at modern Western tanks like the M1 Abrams, the Leopard 2, and the Challenger 2, you won't find the log. Russia, on the other hand, despite also having recovery vehicles, followed the motto, if it works, don't touch it, and kept it in modern tanks. Except for the T-14 Armada. That region is especially affected by this problem due to its extensive swampy terrain and the famous Rasputitsa, the period when the soil thaws and turns extremely muddy. Conditions become so challenging that many vehicles that get stuck are simply abandoned. The Rasputitsa has hindered armies for centuries, affecting Napoleon's troops in 1812, Germany's forces in World War II, and now modern tanks in the Ukrainian conflict. When this happens, an alternative is to use traditional roads, resulting in massive convoys in a row, making them an extremely easy target. But if the tank avoids the main roads and gets stuck with no rescue vehicle nearby, the good old log might be the only solution. You know how it is. It's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. A simple and very effective idea. And do you think it's still worth keeping the log on modern tanks? Thank you for your company, and until next time. Продолжение следует...